What is going on people? Welcome to your 57th Java tutorial. And this tutorial is going to be not a lot of coding actually. It's going to be pretty much clearing up um, a whole bunch of concepts dealing with polymorphism. And trust me, you're going to have a huge, um, a better understanding of polymorphism by the end of this tutorial. So, I just want to go over um, overriding a method real quick and something I didn't tell you about. We built this super class called food and two subclasses called tuna and pot pie. We called a method in food and we called it eat. And we overrode that method in tuna and pot pie. Each of these had an eat method that overrode it. So one thing I didn't tell you about overriding a method, anytime you override a method, you must take the same arguments as in the super class method. So since this E argument didn't have any arguments in it, it didn't have like an integer, this tuna can't have like an integer argument for this. And this pot pie can't do the same. Whenever you put an argument in here, this is called overloading, and that's totally different. But again, if the food, if the main eat method doesn't take any arguments, which it doesn't, tuna and pot pie can't take any either. And also, uh, in that same path, it has to return the same thing too so for example if you returned an integer in here it would have to excuse me if you returned an integer in the superclass it would have to return an integer in the subclass as well and if you're saying alright why do I have to do this why do I have to not take any arguments and return the same stuff if I'm overriding it and in essence doing a whole nother method well it's so that you can have consistency and that is just so anytime you can call the eat method in any of your other scripts then it pretty much guarantees that you can use any of the subclasses as well so if all of these methods take the same arguments and return the same things then they are pretty much interchangeable and that allows you to use a subclass in substitution anywhere you can use a superclass so that pretty much um, then you know what to expect and another thing I want to talk about anytime you override a method so for example we have this food method in our super class and we overrode it with tuna we cannot change the scope of this so for example this food is public right here we can't put private void e see we're getting an error already this changes the visibility of it and why would you override it with a private anyway so you know you just don't want to do that and as I talked about, overloaded method is not the same as override. What overloaded method is, if you hear anybody talking about this, an overloaded method is a method with the same name, but it has different arguments. So for example, we can do this in I and not get an error, but this is a whole nother complete method. So an over so if someone calls eat with a single argument then this method is called but for now I just want to tell you guys that overloaded and overridden are two totally different things so don't get them confused so now that we got that out of the way in in essence I pretty much just want to tell you that um, whenever you override a method you have to take the same arguments and same return types there I said it. I just said it in like three minutes the other time so let's go back to our fatty class right here in let me uh, refresh your memories. We know we can do something like reference, have a tuna reference, and set tuna object equal to um, like new tuna. And as you know, this is the tuna reference right here, and this is the tuna object. And we can do this since tuna is a tuna. And we can also do something like food, food object equals new tuna. And we can do this because tuna is a food and those are the things we learned in the last tutorials but what have we not seen so far what we haven't seen so far is food food object equals new food huh what about that well this ha is a problem for many reasons tuna and pot pie we wouldn't have a problem with and this is because when we put variables in here like color shape tuna has a color Tuna has a shape. Pot pie has a color. Pot pie has a shape. Food is too general. It doesn't really have a color. It says, what color is food? I don't know. What shape is food? I don't know. And if you say, all right, I can eat a tuna. 
I can eat a pot pie, but I can't eat a food. Food is really too general. And I know that there might be some exceptions to this, but for the sake of programming, there are some classes that are just too general that you don't want to create objects on. And this food class is one example. So if we had a food class, we wouldn't want to give it any variables like color or shape because food in general doesn't really have a color or shape. So, all right, that's nice and all. I kind of knew that already, Bucky. So why are you telling me this? I mean, I'm not giving you guys a tutorial to tell you guys that tuna has a color. But what I am giving you guys, teaching you guys, it says, in, even though we can't create food objects, like right here, we need this food class still for inheritance and polymorphism. But when we create this class, we want to make sure other programmers um, can't create food objects either. So how can we make this food class right here and, and how can we kind of bulletproof it to make sure that no one creates an object and they only use this class for inheritance and polymorphism and stuff like that? Well, luckily, the cool people who invented Java gave us this keyword and it's called abstract. And how you make a class ab abstract is type A-B-S-T-R-A-C-T abstract right before the class. And what this does is mean, all right, you can use this class right here, the class of food, but you can't create any objects from it. Oh, yeah? Want to bet? Look at this. Food, food object equals new food object right there. Oh, I did it. Oh, look, I got an error. I guess Bucky is right. I can't instantiate the type food, and that pretty much means you can't create an object anymore. So if we take that abstract away, look at this. The air, it goes away, and now we can create an object. So again, what abstract means is that you can't create an object from that class, but you can use that class from, for things such as inheritance and polymorphism and stuff like that. And that is so when you have a broad class that you only want to use for those kind of things, then it kind of bulletproofs your programming. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be going over the two different types of classes, abstract, we went over in concrete. And I'm going to be showing you guys an example of why it is useful and also what abstract methods are. So this next couple tutorials is more of general ideas. And then we're going to be building programs to use these ideas and put them to use. Use them and put them to use. Did I say that right? Hey, good enough. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys understand that um, anytime you override a method, you need to take the same arguments and also the beginning of what an abstract method in, excuse me, abstract class is. So again, thank you guys for watching. Please check out my next tutorial and I will see you next time. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe.